Um, Devontae Parker says officials need to get on y'all's fucking jobs in an Instagram story where he did at the NFL in the IG story. And we do know that if you at somebody in an IG story, it will show up in their messages. The NFL social media person saw this as a DM before he saw it as an IG story. Devontae Parker letting the entire league know after the concussion situation that happened the other evening on primetime football that need, they need to get on y'all's fucking jobs this was alarming to happen especially what? after what took place this year with Tua. darius i'll ask yeah. for your take first here having to have a teammate go like hey this guy ain't fucking right right now like this is a problem we are not gonna great teammate i believe it was Agu incredible yep. teammate by aguilar and then the nfl let how, how do we hear with what has already happened this season you think d but yeah, that was nuts and it was Prime obvious. Time. yeah it was obvious as soon as he got up he was stumbling and his teammates was holding him up at that point he was trying to get lined up he was kind of Wobbling, fading. So great job by uh, Aguilar getting the, getting the ref's attention. But yeah, this, that's what you got the spotters there for, the third party guys there for. They should, some, even from, if you're in the TV booth, hey, somebody hit a button and get this guy off the field. And this is what I was talking about with Rappaport about the uh, pass interference review, like not being concept, it's execution, which means the humans. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like the concept of, all right, we'll have a unaffiliated neurology, uh, neurological consultant. Uh, in yep. it was an unk, mm -hmm. right? Consultant, unaffiliated neurologic consultant. Mm -hmm. What if that okay. one though that you picked, who is supposed to be in charge of everything, and people are going to, what if that one sucks? What yeah. if that one's not yeah. good? What if that one's just not good at it? it has no for all the incredible information that that UNC's brain has, and the ability to perform brain surgery, fucking. Fantastic. Can't put a light bulb in, okay? Can't see if somebody's potentially having a concussion on a football field. Mm -hmm. What if that hire is the thing? Are we going to blame the entire process, or are we going to blame the hire? And, are, you know, like, that's what I think we should deal with with everything. Like, is it the concept, or is it yeah. execution? Oh. Clearly in Miami, it was execution is what everybody's saying from the investigation that came afterwards. Yep. This one, obviously execution. The concept seems to be there, though, right, for this whole thing? It just needs to get handled better, and how do they fix that, AJ? Who knows? Dude? I mean, it's you got to get the right kind of people that are going to be on the sideline former or up in players. the booth. Yeah. yeah. Former players. I think former yeah. players, I think it helps, sure, but man. also I'm scared at the same time. I'm worried of giving them more control. They do, I've said from the jump, like they do a terrible job of seeing if a guy's dinged up or not and pulling him out. The independent people, it doesn't seem to happen when it should. But also, I don't want to give them too much power. And then all of a sudden, we see it's the fourth quarter, and they're pulling Patrick Mahomes out for three plays because they think he's concussed when he's clearly not. Like, I don't want that to happen either. Yeah, yeah there has to be a fine balance. And once again, it's the people. I think, like, the UNC, um, maybe they should be the ones that are, they like, they get sent to. Like, hey, yes. we need this person to give an actual ruling but it should be somebody that has a little bit of knowledge. Maybe somebody that knows what's saying, oh, Stinger is like, and not a concussion. Like, if we actually want to fix it, mm -hmm. we should get people to know it. And it seems like this is always my answer. Hey, let's hire more players. Let's hire more players. Let's hire more players. But doesn't it feel like a player would be the right one that would accurately know what the bullshit is out there and how to act like what's real, what's not? Like AJ said, though, you don't want to give them too much power, too. Because sometimes, guys, you get hit, and it's not a concussion, but sometimes you do have to just, you know, gather yourself, maybe even take a deep breath. Win. And you would hate for a Tyreek Hill or somebody getting taken off the field in a, a huge moment in the game. But the situation with Devontae Parker, I feel like that was – everyone saw the play. You saw it. I think it was uh, kind of like if it was a catch or not, so mm -hmm. they tried to hurry yes. up and get to the ball. So um, you got to you got to be quick in that scenario because I was watching him. And literally, he was lined up bottom of the field like literally floating. Staggering. That was, that, you know, it was scary. So um, those those obvious ones should be stopped for sure. But when it's kind of uh, teetering the line, maybe you wait a few plays. And get you know, and it's uh, obviously I don't think concussions happen. You know, people aren't just getting knocked out every single play. Yeah. So we're not talking about that. But imagine if Devonte just happens to have to run around and somebody comes up to block him. Yeah. Boom, just a helmet, like a little jolt, two concussions in a matter of die. like a minute or two minutes. Like that's a, that's a very scary thing. Well, right? that was like Kenny. Kenny Pickett got uh, sacked, had the concussion, he hit his head off the turf. They pull him off to the sideline. They evaluate him. They clear him, send him back in. A three and out happens, and then they come on the broadcast. Mitch is in, and they say Kenny is out now. They, they pulled him again. him again with a concussion, reevaluated him, and now he has one. It maybe, was very strange. 
Maybe a symptom popped up. Maybe he got like nausea, nausea, like nauseous, yeah. nauseous or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe he got that. Maybe he got a headache, you know, out of nowhere. And he, he was able to get past or through the baseline test because it wasn't everything. I have no idea. Big dog. We might be, might be a dog. Mm -hmm. But imagine he gets a concussion in that drive. Yeah. Yeah. Then he's not. Playing. But then some people, I think, brains handle concussions better than others. Some people's bodies bruise. Some people's other body don't like. I don't know how we're – I hope we learn more about it. Yeah. I hope we're able to depict more information. So it's like you can eyeball this head. Remember, we've talked about this. You look at this, the frame of this particular, you know, cranium. Right. Yeah. And this one here. Mm -hmm. The whole plate. And just be like, all right, you don't have to deal with any of the, like any of the concussion shit. You're okay. We've been able to just eyeball your fucking – the depth of the bone structure mm -hmm. in your thick skull. Don't need to worry about You're it. You're good. Yeah. You're going to, yeah. you could actually, here's a fun fact for you. I don't know if you know this. You could stick your head out and have a car run <laughs> right into it. Yeah. Up to 34 miles an hour. We are projecting mm -hmm. with the thickness and the shape of your Ohio <laughs> fuckhead. Yeah. That's like a doctor could do that quickly. Zero documented concussions. Had a tooth disintegrate in his mouth mm -hmm. while he was hit. Didn't miss any play. Head to head with Coon. It was fullback known for going head-to-head. -head. Every single day, nine years, zero documented concussions, this guy. And I think if you hear him talk, other than the fact that he's incredibly toxic and, you know, has it, I think you would say, yeah, the guy seems to have it together, not yeah. a problem at all. But then there's other people, just a little bit of a graze for whatever reason, and it's like, oh, we didn't expect that hit to be a hit. It's like, that's a concussion, which is scary as shit. We mm -hmm. should probably keep eyes closer on that particular person. It's like, I wonder if we'll ever get to that stage. I wonder it's if we'll ever get to that stage of it. It's tough and it's scary to you. Like, you know, I know some teammates where it was one hit and you know, like it was, they were just different after that. The guys have played maybe a year, maybe two on teams. And then they uh, are suffering with the shit after ball. And then guys that play, you know, forever, it seemed like they're fine. So, you know, their brain is, everyone's brain is different. Everyone's body's different. They injure different. So um, it's just, it's, it's tough. It's not a full conversation Violent anymore, which too. we're appreciate. Like, that was a conversation yeah. there for a little bit. That's because yeah. a lot of things were we're happening that were scary. But for Devontae Parker to have that happen in the same year that the Tua thing took place, mm -hmm. when right. it was yeah. the loudest, it was leading off um, morning news. Remember? Um, yeah, Good Morning America. Yeah, Greenberg. Remember Greeny said, um, Good Morning America is not talking about whether or not a roughing the passer was roughing the passer. That's only sports people are talking about that. Good Morning America is leading off the show this morning with brain injuries being a problem in the NFL. Yes. He said that the NFL does not want that to be the case. The NFL does not want Good Morning America, mm -hmm. who doesn't normally cover our sport, yep. to cover it as like, hey, these guys are getting knocked unconscious, their yeah. brains are getting beat up, and we know about CTE being a thing. So like, the NFL is going to try to figure out the answers. I just hope it gets to a... Like, I just always assume there's a common sense way of going about doing it. But then whenever you do that, you're assuming that the people you're going to hire are going to have the same common sense that you have and the same experiences that you have and the same knowledge that you have. And it's seemingly impossible to do proper hiring anywhere right now. And this is certainly rolling out right in front of our eyes in the NFL, I think. Well, especially with situations like you talked about with the spotters where if it, like it's a bang-bang play, it happens, and then they're getting up to the line trying to run. It's like... You know, does that guy Tough even job. have enough time mm -hmm. to, to it, you know, call down and be like, hey, he's clearly fucking dinged up. Get him off the field. I don't know. How good can you disguise it? Well, uh, you, you can definitely okay. on, Monday, it. I, I, on Monday night, we all saw it oh, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Players are helping him oh, yeah. walk yeah, back yeah, to yeah. the huddle. How's the spot? Are all the spotters taking shits and no one's watching? And are the refs happening? not looking for that, too? Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Are they doing other shit? Like, the maybe. refs shouldn't have the power, though. The ref shouldn't have the power to send somebody out of the game. Agree. I agree. I understand where you're coming from, though, too. Because once people that aren't affiliated with a team are able to pick and choose who's where and when, like, you're, you're giving the opportunity for this to be a colossal fuck-up. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're yeah. giving somebody an opportunity. But they're going to say, we should err on the side of, of player safety. Yeah, I get yeah. it. But like you said, there's a balance to everything. Like, there really is. you got to find the right people.